Good morning. I'm Dr. Fred Nelson. I'm with Southeastern Neurosurgical and Spine Institute in the Greenville Hospital System. I wanted to talk briefly this morning about meningiomas. Meningiomas are a tumor of the lining of the brain. Uh, the term meningioma was coined by Dr. Harvey Cushing back in the early part of the last century. He's the father of modern neurosurgery. Meningiomas tend to be spherical tumors that again arise from the lining of the brain. They can be over the hemispheres, in the inner hemisphere fissure, along the skull base, around the cerebellopontine angle, and along the sphenoid wing. They can also be in the spine. The incidence of meningiomas is approximately two per 100,000 patients. About, there's a, a incidence of about two and a half to one of females to males in meningiomas. The symptoms of a meningioma uh, is dependent on its location. They tend to be very slow-growing tumors, therefore they can uh, become quite large in size before causing symptoms. If they are in the frontal region, they can cause a slow decrease in mentation and memory over the years, which can sometimes be mistaken for dementia. Uh, if they are along the sphenoid wing or the skull base, they can press on cranial nerves and cause facial numbness or hearing loss or other symptoms like that. If they are in the spine, they can cause back pain and leg weakness or even paraplegia uh, if they become large enough. By far the most uh, useful diagnostic tool for diagnosing meningiomas are MRI scans with contrast. Uh, these tumors light up uh, with contrast quite significantly and are fairly specific uh, in how they look. Often angiography is used, particularly to define its blood supply before surgery. Uh, they can be quite vascular, but often uh, they can be embolized beforehand by the radiologist to cut down on the blood supply. The treatment of meningiomas uh, involves one of three things, observation, surgery, and radiation. We certainly follow a lot of small meningiomas. Those three centimeters or less can often be followed. Uh, we've followed several of these for many years and they have not grown. Certainly the ones that either grow or start causing cerebral edema or particularly ones that cause symptoms need to have surgery performed. The difficulty of the surgery is totally dependent on where these tumors are. Certainly tumors over the convexity can be removed quite easily. Those around the skull base can be quite difficult. Often we will use radiation therapy for those. Uh, stereotactic radiosurgery, which is a focused form of radiation, can be used for the smaller tumors. Uh, for the tumors around the skull base that invade areas that have cranial nerves, often the tumor can be removed um, uh, almost completely, but there may be a small area left around nerves. This can be cleaned up with radiation. The long-term prognosis of patients with meningiomas is dependent on size and location. Very large ones certainly have a higher risk of surgery than smaller ones, and ones that can be only partially removed have a higher risk of recurrence uh, than ones that can be completely removed. Um, these tumors tend to almost always be benign, though there is a percentage of atypical meningiomas and even malignant menin meningiomas, which can recur uh, and can have a poor outcome. So th this is the uh, basis uh, of meningiomas. Uh, they're a lesion we see fairly often. Certainly one of the ones we like to see because we have a, a, a considerably higher success rate in treating and curing these than in some of the other lesions. Thank you.